I'm Dr. Alan Wan, I'm one of the associates for CLD, and I'm here with Dr. Olson, who is a hepatologist and intensivist who works at the University of Kansas. It's a pleasure to have you here. And if you can just briefly tell us what, you know, what would you publish and explain to you what are your managements on pleurifusions and patients with ascites with and well and catheters. Thank you very much for having me. Um, recently I did a presentation for the clinical hepatology update regarding when and whom to use palliative care procedures in patients with manifestations of advanced decompensated liver disease, including pleural effusions, um, as well as refractory ascites uh, that cannot be managed through traditional mechanisms. As you're well aware, the ASLD practice guideline suggests that placement of indwelling pleural chest tubes um, is a very high risk for high risk for morbidity and mortality in patients with refractory hepatic hydrothorax. More recently, a couple of smaller studies have looked again at the placement of pleurex catheters in patients who have refractory uh, hydrothorax and actually have seen some favorable results. Uh, for example, in a study published at the University of Chicago, there was a group of patients who underwent uh, placement of indwelling pleural catheters, some of whom were awaiting liver transplantation. Overall, the uh, success rate was reasonable. Patients had significant resolution of symptoms. However, eight patients in the transplant group did develop infection that precluded consideration for transplant and ultimately resulted in death. A second study that was evaluated at uh, the uh, Washington University University in St. Louis similarly looked at patients who had uh, refractory hydrothorax in this series. Uh, patients who were awaiting liver transplant did fine even uh, without having any significant problems with infection that would have precluded consideration for transplantation. In light of these newer studies, the question now has to be asked, should we be able to consider um, treatment for patients in a palliative manner in patients who are experiencing uh, complications of liver disease, such as refractory ascites and hydrothorax. Um, I think it needs to be very, we, we have to approach these patients very carefully and remembering that palliative care does not automatically equal hospice type care and we have to be, uh, have open conversations about this with our patients. Patients who are clearly experiencing complications of liver disease suffer dramatic decreases in quality of life, may have trouble traveling to centers where they can undergo thoracentesis on a regular basis, and these are the patients that we may want to reasonably consider placing um, indwelling catheters for these patients. So based on your experience and then your review is, what are the patient population that you would think would be the ultimate patient to actually get an indwelling catheter? If we're still going to consider them for moving forward for more advanced therapy such as transplant? Absolutely. I think it has to be an open conversation. I think you have to be very frank with the patient and describe what the potential complications would be, which still include infection um, and leakage around the catheter, et cetera. But for patients that are experiencing um, high volume hepatic hydrothorax, who are being hospitalized repeatedly, who are having complications due to repeated uh, thoracentesis, these are the ideal candidates to consider placement of an indwelling catheter. Once a catheter is placed, very careful surveillance and consideration for prophylaxis for bacterial infections should be considered, and careful reassessment of the fluid um, and patient status on a regular basis will also hopefully ensure better outcomes for these patients. And based on your review, do you recommend any um, monitoring or any prophylactic antibiotics to follow these patients along? In our practice, um, I don't think there's enough evidence yet to suggest exactly how these patients should be monitored or how they should be placed on, um, or what type of antibiotics they should be placed on. In our practice, we place them on antibiotics similar to patients who need to be prophylaxed for bacterial peritonitis, um, and then we assess their nutritional status and their volume status on at least monthly basis and obtain laboratory studies um, every four to six weeks. Okay. And then based on your practice and your review, is there any particularly um, a hepatologist who offer this type of procedures? As we know, very, uh, um, I would say, this is not a, a kind of standard of care. Is there any specific people that you would recommend getting this type of procedures from? So um, partially, I... I see these patients because of my expertise in intensive care as well. Patients are often referred to um, pulmonary experts, um, and I think there's still a considerable amount of confusion as to how this should be addressed in patients who are potentially awaiting liver transplantation. I think the right thing to do is have a multidisciplinary approach. It's always important to make sure that the transplant hepatologist and surgeon is well aware of what um, may be 
what might be being considered for these patients. And with a multidisciplinary perspective, I think you can consider palliative procedures in these patients with reasonable outcomes. We typically involve our interventional radiology team uh, for placement of the catheters when it's uh, desired. And how do you draw the line between a patient who is moving forward with more advanced therapy, such as transplant, and someone actually is going to the palliative care route? So uh, again, I think we have to be very cautious. People who are actually undergoing liver transplant evaluation or even actually listed for transplant, palliative care is still something that can be considered in these patients. Remember that palliative care is not synonymous with hospice. Um, clearly patients who have no transplant options and are clearly at the end of life, then this is more of a palliative care move at an end of life decision. In the patient who may be awaiting transplant, this is a tool that may prevent um, complications from repeated thoracentesis. It may actually improve quality of life and may improve functional status while still awaiting transplant. Remembering, of course, that if they develop severe complications, it may jeopardize their transplant candidacy, and this is why they must be monitored very carefully. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Olson, for this information. Your article is a great contribution to our journal. So thank you for watching this video. For more information, log in to cldlearning.com.